So this is the AWS Deep Racer device. It's a 1/18th scale uh, car optimized for autonomous driving. Uh, you can see here that uh, this wide part is actually the front of the car. Uh, we've got the camera there. Um, so it does look a little uh, peculiar, but that's uh, very, very Amazonian. And for us, we thought about, hey, it's an autonomous car. We can design it however we want to. Um, and so camera on the front uh, to sense the sort of terrain in front of it. Um, and we've augmented the uh, RC car chassis by adding a compute. And the compute is what uh, runs the reinforcement learning model, which tells the throttle and the steering what to do so that the car can drive. Um, so let me take off this hood uh, so you can take a look underneath uh, and we can talk about uh, the components that make up the device. So you can see it's uh, an RC car chassis. That's kind of this silver kind of piece on the bottom. There's uh, two batteries on the car. There's uh, this light blue battery under here is the uh, battery for the drivetrain. The big black block up on top is the compute battery. Uh, the compute battery will run the processor for a number of hours, probably about four hours plus, while the car battery will run the drivetrain for much less than that, probably like 20 to 25 minutes of kind of hardcore driving. The device uh, was built with a single sensor, uh, this camera on the front. This uh, should look familiar if you know about deep lens. It's the same uh, camera assembly or lens assembly as on the deep lens. And it's connected to the car via USB. So you can kind of see through the front ports here, uh, there's a few USBs. And what we did there was we put three USBs across the front in order to enable come some future expansion. So for example, if we wanted to use two cameras and enable a stereosc stereoscopic vision, we think that might um, enable some really interesting driving behaviors down the road. There's a number of I.O. ports on the device. If we start on this side, we've got a full-size HDMI port. And you might ask, why would I want to plug a monitor into a car? Uh, well, so this car is using an Intel um, Atom CPU uh, running Ubuntu Linux, a desktop version of Ubuntu Linux, in fact. So if I were to plug a monitor in here and either plug in a keyboard and mouse via USB, I could basically use this as a Linux desktop computer. And so that enables developers, if they want to you know, get into the guts of the device and really kind of start hacking and seeing how the device works, they can plug in a monitor and just access the device's desktop and look at all the files. Certainly, you could, it supports SSH, so developers can remotely log in if they want to. Okay, so that was the one port. That was the full-size HDMI port. Next to it, we have a micro USB port. And this is to facilitate setup and model deployment of the device. So you could plug the car into your computer via micro USB, and then the car looks to your computer like a hard drive. And so I could just drag and drop my model files into that, and they would kind of get slurped up by the operating system um, and loaded onto the car. Then there's a USB-C port. That's uh, a PD, just a power delivery port. Um, so the battery plugs into the car via USB-C. On this side of the car, uh, there's a number of uh, other buttons and only one port. We've got a micro SD slot, uh, and that's for storage expandability. Uh, the, the other specs on this car, we've got 32 gigs of ENMC storage, which is the, you know, the hard drive on there, um, and we've got 4 gigs of RAM on the device. And then, of course, there's an on-off and a reset button, and a couple of full-color LEDs, so you know when the device is powering on, booting, software updating, um, all of those kind of things. In our default build, they just randomly select a color, but when the device is released to customers, developers will be able to program those LEDs. And this light pipe just ensures that the light uh, kind of filters out to the rear end of the covering here, which you kind of see is clear. So if a de developer wants to play with that, or even like use it to indicate some kind of status signals, you know, hey, the sky's the limit for the developers there. Um, these two little black boxes up on the sides here are the Wi-Fi antennas. So we do have 802.11 um, uh, Wi-Fi on here. Uh, so you actually manage the device typically by connecting it to your home Wi-Fi network. And then there's a web server that runs on the device. And I can use my smartphone or PC or tablet and connect to the web server on the device. So I connect directly to the device either via the IP address or the host name. 
And that's actually how I uh, tell the car to operate. So if you load a model onto it and you turn on the car, the car's not just going to drive away autonomously driving. I have to connect to it with my web browser, tell it, hey, run in autonomous mode, which model do I want to load, and then start, stop. And it's also got a first-person view uh, of the camera feed in that web interface. And then just for grins, we enabled a manual drive mode as well. So if you wanted to, there's a little touchpad joystick and you could kind of drive it around yourself. Um, certainly not super, super easy, because uh, we really designed this car for manual driving, but just in case there's scenarios where you need manual drive, 